When testing a batch of identical cables using the automatic test function, you may print a report like this one for every cable tested, showing the schematic, the wire list, and the test result. To accomplish this, just add a print test data instruction to your macro. This is the macro we used in the automatic testing clip. I'll add the instruction right after the test and match data are compared on line 4. First, I'll select the line immediately below where I would like to insert the print instruction. Then I'll click in the command list. I'll begin typing P for print and print test data specs is the instruction I'm looking for. Instead of printing a report for each cable, you may wish to record only the pass or fail result of every test in a master log without all the details. Then, after you're finished testing the entire batch, print a summary of the results. We call this process data logging, and CableEye will do it for you automatically when you add a few new instructions to your macro. First, let's look at a typical log report to see what we would like to achieve. This report has three basic sections. Here's the title block, also called the page header. This shows the cable's name, the operator's name, your company information, the date and time, the connector information, and the column titles. In the middle of the page are individual entries for each cable tested. For good cables, we see the test result pass on a single line with the time tested. If you scan serial numbers from cables as you test, they may be optionally added in the second column. For bad cables, we see the test result fail on one line and the failures detected on the lines below it. Finally, at the end of the log report, we see a statistical summary of the results, including the total test time needed for the batch and the average time per cable. Here's how to set up your macro for data logging. First, let's remove the print instruction we inserted earlier. I'll click the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of it. Now, at the beginning of the macro, just after the operator is asked to select the matching cable, we'll insert an instruction called open log file. Double click on it. And immediately after that, log header that writes the title block to the file. Then, in the main loop, we need to insert log test result after you've compared the test and match data. This instruction writes the result of our test to the log file every time a cable is measured. The last thing we need to do is adjust the repeat instruction at the end. Notice that what we would like to do is repeat back to the wait for push button instruction. That used to be on line 2, but after we've added some instructions, it's now moved down to line 4. So what I'm going to do is first delete the old repeat instruction, and then add a new one. Double click on it. The little window asks us to enter the line number, and there we have it. Now we'll save it. Click Execute to begin testing. Enter the cable's name. Now enter the name of the log file. I'll use a name that includes today's date and a sequence number, so I'll easily be able to locate this log later. When the first cable is mounted, click the test button to start. That was a good cable. I'm going to check a couple more.
Now to force a failure, I'm going to loosen the connector at one end of the cable. I guess I didn't loosen it enough. There we go. We heard a beep, the difference list is being printed, and when we look at the log in a moment, you'll see that this error has been reported with the failures we've detected. Here's another failure. And now we have a good one. Finally, I'll print the log file. We'll stop the macro, close the log, and click the print log button. This is the log we just created. And here it is. This and your other log files remain on your computer indefinitely for a permanent record of your work. They may be recalled and printed at any time in the future.